Hey guys, it's Cam from Craft and Tailored, and in this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we are talking about a Tudor Snowflake Hybrid Submariner from 1978. The reference is 94010, and these watches were commonly issued to the Royal Canadian Navy, making this a bit of a mill sub, if you will. Uh, it's very rare and a specific variant that is rarely seen. One could actually argue that this is one of the most rare military style submariners that, or military issue submariners rather, that uh, one could possibly add into their collection. And the reason for that is because of the dial and the hand variant. The other thing that's very interesting about these watches is they typically fall within a very specific serial range. These specific Tudor Submariner 94010s uh, possess a dial that is very similar to the Matt Tudor 94010s with the standard dial, meaning that the dial maintains the typical triangular loom plot at 12, and then the rectangular loom plots at the three, the six, and the nine o'clock positions. Um, instead of the block markers that you would commonly find on a Tudor Snowflake Submariner with this type of handset, but these guys, even though they have that more traditional style dial, possess a snowflake minute, hour, and sweep seconds hand, which is only found in, in a very specific serial range. It's also been said that these watches were issued to the Royal Canadian Navy. So the Royal Canadian Navy had a specific request to have a key differentiator between the hour and the minute hand, which is a carryover from what the French military wanted in their watches, but uh, for whatever reason, these watches were issued and produced by Tudor with a more uh, standard and traditional dial set. The dial is kind of reminiscent of what we would call like a radial dial. If you look at the actual marker or the minute track rather that is, sits on the outside of the markers, traditionally with most of the Submariner or Tudor Snowflake or Tudor Submariner dials, what you'll see is that at each uh, minute or hour marker, uh, you'll see differentiation. So at the hour marker, the, the minute track or the marker on the track is actually thicker and then within the minutes it's actually thinner these are actually the all all the same length and, and pretty much all this the same width so um kind of reminiscent of what we would call a, a radial dial so to speak meaning that it has kind of a distinctive look and feel to the dial itself even though it looks more like a traditional tudor submariner style dial What's interesting is in the mid-1970s, the reference 7016-0 was replaced with the 94010, which this is. Um, the most significant modification is the movement, which has uh, been updated with the caliber 2776 um, with a hack mechanism, and it is around 21,600 beats uh, per hour. So uh, much more advanced automatic self-winding movement. The other thing that's really interesting is in this transitional period, the dial in the matte dial uh, switched from the Tudor Rose logo to the Tudor Shield logo, which this dial has. So kind of brings the production of these specific Submariners and reference uh, 94010s into a specific period of time. And there's some key uh, physical differentiators that you can see within the entire reference range, not just this one. Again, the reason why we're featuring this one and the reason why this one is very special is because it's a hybrid snowflake. Um, what's interesting is I've been working with um, a Tudor watch expert by the name of Ross Povey. He started a really awesome website called Tudor Collector and we'll provide a link to Ross's website below. Ross has been immensely helpful in helping me learn more about Tudor and also uh, compiling and collecting information about rare and just interesting Tudor watches altogether. Tudor also wrote for our friends over at Revolution Watch and they were talking about um, these Tudor hybrid snowflakes. What's interesting is they fall within a very specific serial range. So it's not like every 94010 that has the snowflake hands and the radial style dial uh, is out there. It's a very specific range of production which validates the authenticity of these, of these watches. And uh, it's something that we commonly see within the known examples that exist today. You know, what's interesting is these watches uh, seem to have come from Tudor in that way. And actually Ross uh, provided a photograph that was sourced for him, or maybe Ross found it, I'm not sure. Maybe Ross, you can comment and, and clarify. But Ross provided on Tudor Collector uh, an actual advertisement that shows this type of dial and handset 
which um, I think, again, further validates the existence of this watch holistically. What's interesting with the serial numbers is the range is typically between 880,000 to 889,000. So we're talking about a very small range of production. The serial number on this, believe it or not, is 88888 and then a couple of other digits. But um, what's interesting is we've seen consecutive serial numbers within these Tudor hybrid snowflake style watches. So really, really cool. So again, these are very, very interesting. These specific examples are very seldomly seen. Um, another interesting thing is that this has been said to have been the precursor to the Tudor Black Bay watches, which have a more traditional style dial format but possess the snowflake style hand. So um, this you know, does make sense. I believe that Tudor does have one of these in their, in their archives. And um, that again is, is, has been said to have what has you know, led Tudor to create the, the Black Bay version of watches, which have been very, very popular. Again, more of a traditional style dial format and um, the snowflake hands, which again, kind of provides a very interesting look. What I love about this watch is that it's very striking, it's very different. When it's on my wrist, it wears kind of like any other normal 38 millimeter sub that wears more like a 40. It's very comfortable. I've been wearing this watch on a NATO strap and I would, I, I would venture to say that most of them were issued on a NATO strap. Um, whether or not a bracelet had been affixed, most of these watches, at least every one that I've seen, does not come with fixed spring bars that you would see in like a 5513 or 5517 that is military issue. But um, what's interesting is that the watch wears differently to me, especially when I look down at it. I think that uh, traditional style dial format with the snowflake hands provides a really interesting feel and look. The Snowflake is one of my favorite watches. I actually have one in my personal collection that I wear quite frequently. The other thing too is I've worn it out to a couple of watch get togethers and things like that and people kind of pick up on that it's different and at first they can't really figure out why it's different. So they're like, wait, that's a Snowflake, but it looks different. Oh, why is that dial there? So from a conversation perspective, it's a, it's a very interesting piece uh, to have a conversation around. I think it's really, really cool. Um, furthermore, in this book here, uh, by Alberto Anasari, uh, which is Tudor Anthology, which we sell on our website. Again, I'll provide a link in the description below. They actually have one in their book, um, which I thought was was pretty, pretty rad. So um, they actually write about it and very, very similar watch, very similar, again, radial dial kind of format with the snowflake hands. And under ultraviolet light inspection, when we inspect the watch, the luminous material on the dial and within the hands is very consistent and actually matching. So again, um, I, I think that there were there wasn't a lot really known about these watches up until recently. And, um, you know, this one's from 76, ours is from 78, but I, I think there's a very small production window for these watches, which makes them very unique and, and ultimately very, very special. So that's why it is on my wrist. And I think it's uh, really, really cool. Additionally, Houdinki featured this watch recently. Isaac Winkold uh, from Houdinki wrote about this watch. It was featured in, in Bring a Loop. So I thought I would do a little bit of a video on this watch to kind of give you some additional information on the piece. Uh, I'll provide a link in the comments below or the description below to allow you to check out the listing on our website to gather more information. And I'll also provide a link below to Ross Povey's site who's been uh, a really big help to us in terms of validating and, and helping me learn as a collector more and more about one of my most favorite watch brands, which is, which is Tudor. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.